So before I moved to New York City and transferred to the City College of New York to study recording and sound engineering, um, I lived in Denton, Texas and went to the University of North Texas for a year. And I studied jazz guitar there. They have a really great uh, music program there and a great guitar jazz program there. And one of the things that I'll never forget is my very first day, my very first class, the head of the jazz, gu jazz guitar department came out and he said, hey, I've been listening to you guys play for a couple weeks now because we all had to do, um, what do you call it, where we had to play for him to do like an entrance exam to get in. And he said, I've, I've been listening to you play for a long time, so now you're going to listen to me play. And that was just sort of a funny introduction for him to show us how he practices. So this was the super interesting thing is that I'd never seen what a real life uh, professional guitar player does when they sit down to practice. And so he sat down with his metronome and just started with some really basic things. And so I wanted to create an experience for you a little bit like that with this video, just showing you what I do when I practice at home, because, you know, everybody says you have to practice. And I've been telling you for years that you have to practice this stuff. You can't wait till you get out into the field to do it. And so here, I just wanted to show you that I do the same thing. So I usually try to find a day, uh, usually on a weekend when I have at least half a day free it's better if it's a full day because you never really know how long the stuff is going to take to set up and then you're going to run into some computer problems and you have to update some things and it takes a little while to get it set up, right? So you need some unhurried time to really practice, do experiments, make mistakes. And so this video is like, I don't know, probably three hours, but it's sped up, I think four times or something. So I think this whole video is... 20 minutes long and it's not about me teaching you how to do anything but just you seeing how I practice at home so in the bottom right there you can see me moving around my little living room um, and then on the screen there you see me practicing with cross light and uh, I have a BSS blue 160 output processor that I'm controlling there so you know, when you, ha when you practice at home, you usually want to have some kind of goal, something you want to learn, something you want to practice, or you could just have like freeform experiments and see what comes up. But I, there's usually something that I want to get done that really forces me to like, okay, I need to get, I need to set aside a day to work on this. So I'd say the two main things I'm trying to do here are, number one, practice with Crosslight, which is a new audio analyzer I've been trying to learn. And so I'm working on a method here because every audio analyzer has a method that, that kind of wants you to use, right? And so you you take whatever you learned with your other audio analyzers that you've already mastered and you try to just migrate that over to a new platform. So that's what I'm trying to figure out how to do here. And if you watch this whole thing, you'll sort of see me make mistakes and go back and fix things and try different things. But I, but the, uh, so the other thing, so number one, Crosslight, number two, is that I'm trying to make it as realistic as possible by setting up real speakers in my living room. So I've got a JBL um, main and sub. And then I'm also using my iPad as the controller, um, you know, through like a remote desktop app, which is not really a pleasurable experience and it slows everything down. But I'm forcing myself to do that because I know that's how I'm going to do it in the field. So I not only want to be training myself on the software, but also just like getting the motor skills <laughs> to, you know, poke around on an iPad and, and, you know, accidentally click the wrong thing and have to fix it and figure out the whole networking thing. Like all this stuff with technology can really slow us down in the field if we don't have practice, you know, uh, figuring it out at other times. Okay, so I started by just collecting all the data, right? I think I took seven or eight measurements of each speaker at seven or eight different locations. And so I just stored all of that. Now you're gonna see me import it back into Crosslight. 
And uh, I don't remember exact order of things here, but it looks like that I'm going to uh, align everything, then do a process in Crosslight called noise reduction. Um, and then I'm gonna create an average and then export that average. I'll import that average back into Crosslight. I'll EQ it. Then I will practice doing an alignment between main and sub, and I believe also main and front fill. Actually, I think um, what will happen at the end is I'll actually get my microphone back out and I'll find the crossover point between main and front fill and then uh, do the alignment. And I think that's the last thing I'll do. Um, the only other thing I should say is that there is a third speaker, right? So there's a fill speaker. It's just a little studio monitor set up on a stand. So when you're practicing, the idea is to have it be as close to the real world show environment as possible. So ideally, you would use the exact same place where you're going to do a show. So imagine that you're going to do a show in a theater. So you go in there on a dark day and you do your practice. And then if that's not possible, you just sort of keep scaling down, right? So you... If you can't get into a theater, then maybe you go to the warehouse. If you can't get into the warehouse, then maybe you do it at home. If you can't get real speakers, then maybe you use some kind of modeling environment or you could, uh, you know, download some data from Tracebook, import it into your audio analyzer, practice your alignments there. Um, there are other places, other modeling environments like Map3D, SoundVision, ArrayCalc, where you can also practice this stuff, you know, that all have different kinds of features, but it's it's good to practice in all of them. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I have to say about this video. Um, let me know if you like this. I can do more of these in the future that uh, sort of show me practicing with different things. So every time I practice, it's usually with something slightly different. So sometimes I'm trying to practice with Smart or practice Room EQ Wizard. Usually it has something to do either with a show that I have coming up or something that I'm teaching. So if I'm teaching something using Room EQ Wizard coming up next week, then that's what I'll be practicing with. Um, and I'm also curious how you practice. So comment below this video. Um, tell me how you practice at home. Tell me what questions you have about practicing at home. If there's some challenges you've run into um, or some questions that you have, let me know how I can help. All right. Enjoy the rest of the video.